In this video, we are going to talk about how to configure different Groovy runtimes in Jenkins. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. Sometimes there's a lot of confusion about how Groovy is used within a Jenkins controller. Today, I hope to demystify some of that and also show you how to correctly use Groovy within any of your pipelines. Sometimes you might choose to use Bash if you're running Linux or maybe using PowerShell if you're using Windows to execute certain tasks. However, sometimes you need more control, more of a real programming language to be able to do the things that you need to do. Bash and PowerShell might just sort of fall off. You may choose to use Groovy as a scripting language. You might want to use PHP. You might want to use Python. Doesn't really matter. As we focus today, I want you to understand one thing specifically. What we're going to be talking about today is actually running and executing real Groovy scripts within a Jenkins pipeline. This is not scripted syntax pipelines. This is not declarative pipeline. We will be using declarative pipeline. This is where a lot of the confusion starts to happen. Some people will say, oh, I'm writing a Groovy pipeline. A scripted syntax pipeline, and even to an extent, the declarative pipeline syntax are just DSLs based on Groovy. The key part here is they are not Groovy. Sometimes that's a very big log to jump over and try to understand. What we're talking about today is using Groovy just like we would use Python or PHP or any other type of scripting language. So here's where we're starting today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.289.1, and attached to this controller, I have an agent with a label of Linux. Both the controller and the agent are running JDK 8. Now, I've also done a little bit of preparation for my agent. Using Ansible, you could use Ansible, Puppet, Chef, or just a script, however you want to do it, for configuration management. I have already installed an extra JDK, JDK 11, and I've also installed Groovy 2.5.14. Both JDK 11 and that specific version of Groovy are just in slash opt slash tools. So all I did was download a zip file or a tarball, unzip them and place them on the file system. I've not set up any extra environment variables or done anything else like that. It's just a download and extract and they're just prepared so we can use them a little bit later. So to make it simple to work with different versions of Groovy, as your scripting language, not as your pipeline, but as your scripting language, which you're just going to use. So I would say Groovy space x dot Groovy to run a Groovy script. Or in the case that we're going to see today, Groovy dash dash version. We're just trying to figure out what version of Groovy that we have. However, out of the box, because with the Jenkins LTS that I have installed, I just used install suggested plugins. We need to install one plugin in order to have a pipeline step that we can use to access specific versions of Groovy. And that step is called with Groovy. And that step is provided by the Groovy plugin. So let's go and install the Groovy plugin. So we'll go to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins. We'll go to Available. And we will type Groovy. And it's the very top one. At the time of recording, it's 2.4. This plugin executes Groovy code. That's what we want. So I'm going to check that. Download now and install after restart. We'll wait for it to download. And then we will restart. And now that we are back, let's go ahead and sign in. And let's go double check that the plugin was installed correctly. Should have been, but we'll double check it anyway. Manage plugins. We will go over to installed once it wakes up. There we go. And in the filter, we will type Groovy. And we can see here that the Groovy plugin 2.4 was installed. So we're good to go there. So what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and create a new job just to see what we have to work with. I'm going to say new item. I'm going to call this test Groovy pipeline. And in this first one, we're going to be using with Groovy, sh Groovy dash dash version. So let's click on save and see what happens with this. 
we take a look at it, we can see that it's running on Agent 1, and we run Groovy dash dash version, and the version of Groovy that it's using is 2.4.12. Now, where did this come from? Well, this actual version of Groovy is coming from within the Jenkins controller itself. So if you were to go and take a look and see what version of Groovy is running inside of the Jenkins controller, it is this specific version at the time of recording, 2.4.12. But let's say that we want to install different versions of Groovy and we want to use those specific versions of Groovy in other ways. Here's how we do it. We're going to go back over to Manage Jenkins, and we're going to click on Global Tool Configuration. When we installed the Groovy plugin, it created this Groovy installations section. So we're going to say Add Groovy. For this first one, we're going to name it 3.0.8, because we want to install from the Groovy website Groovy 3.0.8. Simple. So if you've watched the JDK video or potentially the Maven video of how to install automatically, it's the same type process. So let's go ahead and click on Save. And then let's go back over to our job and make a small, small change. So we're going to go to Configure. For With Groovy, we're going to add a parameter to With Groovy. And the tool is going to be 3.0.8. I believe I have that syntax right. Let's double check. I do. So 3.0.8. SH Groovy version. Let's click on Save. And now Build Now. You can see here that it's unpacking Groovy JFrog.io. But you get down to the end, oh yeah, Apache Groovy Binary 308. So we can see here Groovy dash dash version is showing 308. If we go back and look at build run one, it was 2412. So right now we are running 308. It downloaded the version of Groovy that we wanted to use. It installed it into Home Vagrant Agent Tools and then Hudson plugin Groovy Groovy installation 308. This 308 is the name that we just gave that installation, 3.0.8. This location, Home Vagrant Agent, is the remote root directory for our agent. And just to prove that out, we go take a look at our agent, configure, and we can see that the remote root directory is Home Vagrant Agent. So let's go back to our job real quick, take a look at the output of two, we can see that it did home vagrant agent. It put it into a tools subdirectory, much like how the JDK and Maven installations work. It created a subdirectory underneath that as well, making it specific for Groovy, and then it used the name 308. So when we run Groovy dash dash version after passing in the tool to with Groovy, we get Groovy version 308. Now, next up, let's go and set up a different version. So we go to Dashboard, Manage Jenkins, Global Tool Configuration. And if you think back to the beginning of the video, I said I had already installed via Ansible a different version of Groovy, and it's just made available on the file system. So let's go to Groovy Installations, Add Groovy. The version that we're going to do is 2.5.14. I believe that's right. It is correct. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck Install Automatically. And for Groovy Home, I'm going to put the fully qualified path down to the Groovy installation. And in this case, this is all that I need. Opt Tools Groovy Groovy-2514. Now, you can see the warning here saying this is not a directory on the Jenkins controller but perhaps it exists on some agents. And that's what we have. We know this path exists on our agent. Let's go ahead and click on Save. And then let's go modify our job to use that version within the tool. So we'll change it from 3.0.8 to 2.5.14. Now let's click on Save. And do a build now. 
Let's see what happened here. We're running on agent one, and we can see that Groovy dash dash version is Groovy version 2514. Now, let's look at a different way to do an installation. We'll go back to dashboard, manage Jenkins, global tool configuration. Let's go down to Groovy, Groovy installations. Now, let's say that we want to install version 2.4.21 because I know that's a valid version of Groovy. But if I go and take a look at install from Groovy website and I click on the dropdown, there is no 2421 available in this dropdown. But I know what the URL is to grab the zip file so I can do the installation. So how do we do this? I'm going to delete the installer here, but I'm still doing install automatically. I'm going to change add installer to extract zip targz. This label is going to be for any agent that has this label, install this version of Groovy if it is not already installed. So in my case, the label is Linux. The download URL in my case is this, which you can see here is Apache Groovy binary 2421. And then the subdirectory for this, because when you take a look at the zip file, at the root of it is this directory, groovy-2421. So now we have an install automatically with a specific download URL, and we've given it a name of 2421. And that should be it, it is. Let's click on Save. Let's go modify our job to use that new configuration. So I want to use 2421 as my tool. Let's click on save. And now build now. We take a look at four. We can see here that it downloaded the zip file that we specified 2421 to home regular agent tools, groovy installation 2421. This is just like the initial one for 3.0.8, except there it already knew what the download URL needed to be. Here, we specified the version of the download URL. So we can see here that the output is 2421. Finally, I want to show you a way to use a different version of the JDK with Groovy. Now, let's do one thing first. Let's go back and add a JDK reference inside of our configuration. So configure tool configuration or global tool configuration. We're going to add a JDK. I'm going to uncheck the install automatically because this is, again, the installation I did early on using Ansible to put the JDK version 11.0.11 on my agent. So 11.0.11, the Java home location for that version of the JDK is right there. And again, we get the warning. It's not a directory on the Jenkins controller, but perhaps it exists on some agents. I know that it does. So let's go ahead and click on save. Now, I want to do one more thing here. We'll modify our job, configure. Now, I know that anything prior to version three of Groovy doesn't work well with Java 11. In fact, I'm gonna show you that real quick. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to leave the tool at 2421 first. We're going to modify this to include JDK, and this is using the JDK tooling, the one we just created, 11.0.11. .11. Let's click Save and see what happens. Let's build now. We'll take a look at 5. We can see here, Groovy dash dash version. We get a handful of warnings, and then eventually the big warning of all illegal access operations will be denied in a future release. That's fine. I just wanted you to see this. But we can see that we're using Groovy version 2421, and the JVM is 11.0.11. Now, let's modify this one last time. Test Groovy configure. And let's change this back to 3.0.8. 3.0.8. Click Save. One last run. If we take a look at 6. 
We can see here the Groovy version is 308 using the JVM of 11.0.11. .11. So that's three different ways that you can install Groovy to use with your Jenkins controller. To start out with, you needed to install the Groovy plugin, which gave you the ability to use the with Groovy step inside of your pipelines. Once we did that, we did install automatically. We also turned off the automatic installation and just pointed it at a local Groovy home. And finally, we gave it a zip file to download and install automatically for us. Finally, we took a look at how to specify a version of a JDK to use with Groovy. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.